grace, peace, and mercy to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered worldwide and the strangers that's with us. <clears throat> Hopefully this be a short lesson, um, brothers and sisters. I don't intend to stay long, but just to touch and go on a few scriptures um, to elaborate, to explain um, what I believe through my studies um, is what the Word of God is saying. Um, I don't come at this with any bias um, in regards to man. So I'm not agreeing with no brothers. I'm not agreeing with no sisters. I'm agreeing with the Word of God. And that's what I, I intend to share with you this morning. Is to share what thou say of the Lord. I'm not adding. I'm not taking away. I know this is a touchy subject because you got brothers out here that's manipulating uh, those that are unlearned in the Word. So I understand that this is a touchy topic and people don't want to talk about it. Um, but we have to get an understanding with all our getting. And we know that our people, the 12 tribes of Israel, we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, meaning a lack of knowing the truth. And the truth will always lead us to Jesus Christ, always. If it don't, if this, if whatever you're researching and you suppose that it's the truth, if it doesn't lead you back to the feet of Christ, it's not the truth. God say in Proverbs that knowledge is easy to him that understandeth. The beginning of understanding, knowledge and wisdom is to fear the most high. <laughs> A lot of people don't fear the most high. They read this book and they think that the Lord is speaking to them and then they run and trying to tell that. But the Lord didn't send them. And you can tell because they don't know what they're talking about. So nevertheless, I, like I said, I'm not trying to make this long. But I want to read this first. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs 27. And let's look at verse 20. It says, hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. So, lust is the, is the problem behind this topic of more than one wife, or some people call it polygamy. Okay, it's lust. That's what's driving these brothers to take it, take what the words say and twist it. For their own personal agenda. It's lust. I'm going to say it again. It's lust. It is sexual immorality that's in their brain. Okay. And it's causing them to act this way. When the scriptures don't validate. Or does not justify what they do. But don't jump to conclusions yet. Hear the whole matter. First. That's what the book say. Don't speak before you hear the whole matter. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to wrath. That's what the Lord said, right? Okay, now let's go to, um, let's go to 1 Timothy. Matter of fact, skip 1 Timothy. We'll come back to that. Let's go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Now, James wrote this to the whole nation of Israel. Okay? To our people that scattered. Read verse 1, chapter 1. He wrote it to us. This whole Bible is dealing with us. It ain't to say that the strangers can't sojourn among us and be a part of this thing. But I'm not trying to digress. Anyway, he said, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? That mean these brothers, a lot of them, they get into this truth. 
they never take time to sit at the feet of Messiah to because Jesus reveals who you really are. Jesus will you he will speak to you through the word when you take time out on a daily basis and wait at his gates. When you listen to his voice, Jesus will expose the real you to you to let you know what he wants you to work on because you cannot enter into the kingdom without the right garments on. So that's why every day is a process. That's why we have to carry our cross every day and kill off these different things that the Most High is pointing out to us. It's funny how these brothers always got a word from the Most High, but the Lord ain't Apparently, he's not telling them to get their house in order, to straighten up their life, to stop masturbating, to stop watching pornography. The Lord ain't convicting them about that, but he got he giving them a, a short enough word to where they get on the Internet. Whether it's YouTube, Facebook, whatever, and they posting videos about how much the Lord then gave them all this knowledge. But the Lord not telling them to, to stop lusting, to stop coveting. Stop committing an idolatry. He ain't, he ain't telling them that, though. They never get a grasp on reality. The reality of God is not going to give you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for somebody else before he give it to you for you. People got it backwards, man. That's why this this topic of multiple wives, that's why it's so it have messed up so many brothers and sisters. Because these brothers that go out here and preach this the wrong way. They themselves are bound by their own sexual immorality. And that's why when they preach on it or they talk about it, that's why. Through discernment, you can see and realize they don't really understand what the most I'm talking about. They twist in it because their mind is perverted. It have not been washed by the blood of Christ. Their mind is not pure. The book said, the blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. The Lord said, he said, if you listen to him and obey his voice, he will pour out his spirit unto you and make his words known unto you. That means you can't just sit down and read the Bible and think you got an understanding. God have to give you the understanding. And the only way he gives you the understanding is when your intentions are right. When your intentions are, Lord, I just want to serve you the right way. I don't want to add to your word. I don't want to take away whatever it say. This word is a double edged sword. So, Lord, cut me. Cut me before I speak this word to anybody. You deal with me first, most high, please. I want to be humble before you. See, these brothers ain't thinking about this. They thinking about she got a behind like two basketballs. That's all they thinking about. And it, it shows. James said this. Ye lust, this verse two, ye lust and have not. You want more than one wife, but you don't have it. Now I'm going to deal with certain arenas of this conversation because it's not just one central location but he said you lust and have not you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet ye have not because ye ask not so if you ask the most high would he give you more than one wife depends on the circumstance we're going to touch on it verse 3 ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts these brothers not asking for more than one wife because their first wife is barren like sarah like leah like rachel their first wife is not messed up to where and see, it's another part to that. But they, their first wife, it's nothing wrong with their first wife. And I'm going to show you in the Bible, that was a condition. That was something that the Lord gave certain brothers in the scriptures a second wife for. It's not because these brothers wanted to 
hump this girl and then forget about her. Don't take care of the children. Don't be a man and take care of his responsibility. Take care of that woman. Provide for her. No, nah, these brothers don't want to do that. They just want to hit it and quit it. James said, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Let me show you something. Let's go to, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 21. Let me show you something real quick. Deuteronomy 21, and when you get there, go to verse 15. Deuteronomy 21 and 15. I remember some months ago, I tried to give the most basic version to understand of polygamy to a brother. And this brother wanted to argue me up and down after a while. At first, it seemed like he understood, but then he just wanted to argue me up and down. Like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. It's wrong completely. It's a sin. Let me show you how if you say it's a sin, then you judging God's law. We have to get an understanding. We have to be patient. Let patience have her perfect work, the book say. So we have to be patient while we get an understanding. Because we don't know it all. The Most High alone knows it all. And just because everybody talking about they, they believe in the Messiah and they believe in the Most High don't mean that they understand the Bible neither. Because wide and broad is the road that leads to death and destruction. And many are on that road. The, the straight and narrow road is only few of us. Deuteronomy 21.15 if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated. Don't that sound familiar? Don't that sound like Jacob, Rachel, and Leah? Now, the Most High is talking about this after the fact. Now, I got a question for those that think that polygamy in and of itself is a sin. I have a question for you. If it's a sin, then ask yourself this. Would the Most High make provision for sin? Anywhere in the Bible, do he do, do he do that? Because if he do, then you have to prove that. The Bible say prove all things and hold fast that which is good. He said, if a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated. Now again, this whole Bible is written to who? To us, the 12 tribes of Israel. So think about it. Think about it, Israel. Don't you see a lot of brothers out here that got what we call today baby mamas, but they they are operating in polygamy. Now we're going to have to look at another part to this, this equation because it's not as simple and cut and dry like people try to make it. Because we are enslaved. We are in captivity worldwide. But look at this. He says... If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son, if his first child is by the woman that he wasn't really in love with, but she was his second wife, she was his concubine, right? Then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he had, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. You have to understand this. Verse 17, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So. The Lord is saying, if a man have two wives, you look around in society today, even in this country, United States of America. I got brothers that I know in the streets. They not in the word, but I grew up with some of these people. And they got more than one wife. 
you say, well, how so? They, they would have to go get the legal paperwork. Okay, I feel you on that. Let's go look at that. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans 13. Romans 13 and verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Don't just stop there, though. Let's keep going. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance or the commandment of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Now, we know the system is corrupt. It's a beast system. But the, 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 the Most High speaking through Paul, the apostle to the northern kingdom, is saying, as basically, as long as the, the government that you under, wherever you at, Israel, as long as the government that you're under does not command you to disobey God's law, then you obey them. So if they tell you to pay taxes, don't look for a loophole to not pay taxes. If they tell you that in order to be recognized by them, you have a choice as a husband and wife. You have a choice on how you can do it. You can either live together for seven years in certain parts of the country or you can go, you know, and have a, a ceremony and get some paperwork. Because if you do it, if you just stay, if you live together for seven years, they, they announce you husband and wife automatic. It's, I think it's called the common common law or something like that. But you could do it the other way and just go get the paperwork. But it's your choice. But you still got to be obedient because they're not telling you to break God's law. Now, on the flip side, on the flip side, right, they do say, well, look, you could fornicate with whoever you want. You can have sex and, and you know, we won't say that you're married. But is that what the what the most high God says? Let's find out. Let's go to Exodus 22. Let's go to Exodus 22. Because a lot of brothers have come out and said sex is not marriage. Okay. I hear you, but let's see what the Lord say. Exodus 22 and verse 16, and if a man entice a maid, a virgin, virgin, we talking virgins, we're not talking harlots, we're not talking women that been with multiple men before they decide they want to settle down. We're talking about a virgin of Israel. If a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and she not promised to another brother and lie with her, lie with her means what? We know what that means. Come on. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. What does that mean? That means if he has sex with her, then he must marry her. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Then you slap on Romans 13 and say, okay, well, look, seeing as how y'all done already had sex, you now, according to the laws of God, if you want to be right with the Most High, you're going to have to marry her. So in essence, brothers and sisters, sex is marriage. Because if you have, se if brothers, if you have sex with a female, it don't matter how, how much you disdain her after the fact. It don't matter if you didn't, if it was just supposed to be a hookup. See, this is this this mindset will keep you away from adultery. It'll keep you away from sexual immorality, from fornication. Because when you understand the moment that you enter into her, it don't matter, <laughs> you know, if she ain't got the prettiest face. It ain't. It don't matter if. She's not your type. You must marry her if you want to be right with the most high, that is. So, like I said, in essence, sex is marriage. I get the point of you have to follow the law of the land. But you can't, look, the law of the land say that you can have sex and they won't say that you're married. That's not what God said. God don't give away the, the, the woman's matrix for free. It come with a price. And that price is you're going to have to make a covenant with her. You must. And if you don't, you violate the holy law and you are in transgression and God don't don't smile on willful sin, brothers and sisters. So, brothers, you, you need to really be careful and think about what you're doing. OK, now let's look at a, another aspect of this multiple wives situation. Let's go to First Timothy. Because you have some well-known Hebrews within our community 
that's some elders that's acting foolish. And they not just down in Kentucky, Tennessee. They up in the north too in this country. These brothers is all over, elders included. And I'm scratching my head like, dang, a big part of me want to be surprised. But I do remember the Lord said, there's nothing new under the sun. What's been done before to be done again. Jacob's trouble about to hit us as a people worldwide. So just like it was during 70 AD leading up to, the, to August when Judah got you know, uh, dismantled by the Romans. Same thing going on now. The Europeans arming themselves, the other nations, they arming themselves, getting prepared to do what? To come get us. Why? Because Israel's still doing evil. Still. We're not, we not paying attention as a people. The remnant of the Most High is paying attention, and we walking with Christ. We walking behind him following in his footsteps. The multitudes of, amongst Israel, oblivious, oblivious. Now this is 1 Timothy 3 verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Now the Lord gave this to Israel. On a side note, Timothy and Titus and Philemon and, you know, some of these other brothers that you read about in the testimony or the New Testament, these brothers, even though it say Greek, these brothers were Hebrew Israelites. They fathers were called Greeks because they fathers was not following the Most High. And they took on the custom of the, the, the ruling class at that time. Just like today, you have Israelites that don't call themselves Israelites. Before the Lord woke me up and showed me that we, that we Israel, I didn't know that we was Israel. I was calling myself African-American too. And black. So this is a side note, but I'm trying to tell you that Timothy and Titus and all them, they was not Greeks. They was not Europeans. These brothers was Israelites. Okay. And Paul is instructing Timothy, who's an Israelite, a young brother, a young pastor at that time, on how to deal with the congregation that the Lord put him over. So verse one. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired the good work. A bishop then, or you could say pastor or under shepherd, a bishop then must be blameless, blameless. That means people can't, people shouldn't be able to come and accuse this brother of acting foul or taking the Most High's name in vain. Because this brother's supposed to be sober minded, vigilant. Feeding God's sheep, feeding his lambs, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, and the strangers that sojourn among us, right? He must be blameless. And this is the, this is the master key about this, tying into polygamy. The husband of one wife. One wife. So these preachers out here that have more than one wife and they elders, oh, that is scary and sad and disappointing and frustrating all in one. Because then how you going to turn around and, and criticize the younger generation who is looking up to you, but you setting a bad example. So then when they do worse, then you're going to come out your mouth and say, oh, I see, it's something wrong with the younger generation. It's your fault, though. It's your fault. You can't change the whole world by yourself, but you can change your surroundings where you at. The individuals that watch you, that watch your lifestyle. You can you can potentially change their mind about how they live and by how you live and the things that you say. So let me go on. The husband of one wife, a pastor can only have one wife. A pastor can only have one wife. Polygamy, so far than what we've read, polygamy is not a transgression. The Lord ain't say, thou shalt not have more than one wife. Now, right here, he's breaking it down. The one who is feeding God's people can only have one wife. Why? Because the pastor is a direct relation. He's a direct reflection of Jesus and Israel. 
the high priest and his wife, his one wife. Yes, the priest can have a wife, Roman Catholic Church. Y'all foul anyway. We know y'all Satan's wife. But the priest is supposed to be able to have a wife. It's not good for man to be alone. And all men don't need a wife, just like all women don't need a husband. To who is able to receive it, let him receive it. The Lord said, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, of good behavior, not double-tongued, not mouth full of profanity, a carnal mind, a military mind. It says of good behavior, given the hospitality, apt to teach. Teach what? Out your own thoughts? No, out the book. Say what the Lord say. Don't add, don't take away. Because the Lord said if you do that, he going to reprove you, meaning he going to correct you, and he going to prove that you're a liar. Because you're going to be saying something, and people going to be saying, the Lord said that? And then when people go back and search the Bible, they're going to find out, no, nah, that's not what the Lord said. And you're going to be known as a liar. It's different when you're wrong about something. You say, well, it's pop. Look, I'm not saying that I'm right. I don't know. I'm still certain. It's different when you talk like that. But when you say, oh, yeah, the Lord said, the Lord told me. I'm about 60 years old and the Lord told me I could have more than one wife and I'm and I'm a pastor over his flock. The Lord told me I could have more than one wife. You sure about that, pastor? You, you sure about that, elder? Because I see what, right here where the Lord said that a, a, a bishop is only supposed to have one wife. Even deacons is only supposed to have one wife. Mm. It says not given to wine, no striker. <laughs> so when you when you when the when the when the preacher who then took more than one wife, which is forbidden, and he's a raging alcoholic on the low, but he give you a snippet of this in his videos. And I ain't coming, I'm not attacking the elder. Some of y'all may already pick up on who I'm talking about, but he ain't the only one. But I'm not trying to disrespect the elder. I'm just saying what, what is the book. I'm saying what the Lord is saying. Not giving the wine. No striker. So he ain't always talking about beating people up. Not greedy or filthy lucre. There is no modern day apostles, brothers and sisters. That's another lie that you probably have heard before. You've probably heard somebody say, oh yeah, we got apostles today. No, we don't. There's no apostles. It was 12. Judas committed suicide, and the Lord, the Most High, anointed Saul, who we call Paul today, to be the 12th disciple, to be the replacement for Judas. It says, not greedy or filthy lucre. So, yeah, in the book of Acts, the disciples, after they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they wanted to sell everything, and they distributed, they gave the money and set it at the, at the apostles' feet, and the apostles distributed the money so that everybody had equal stuff. Nobody lacked. But the apostles are sleeping. They're awaiting the first resurrection. So should we be bringing money to one brother's feet so that he can distribute the money? No, nah, because apostles is plural, meaning more than one. And seeing as how it ain't no apostles living today because they're sleeping, then that is not the truth. And these brothers, a lot of them, are greedy or filthy lucre. In other words, they want the money. Some brothers will take more than one wife because of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Brothers will defile themselves because of the love of money. You idolize trees. Ain't that something? Paper. Wood. No wonder the Lord said when we went into captivity, we will worship wood and stone. He said, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man not... If a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? 
not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. And the same goes for the deacon too. So, that's one example of, okay, the Lord ain't say polygamy was wrong. He did not say that. What he said was, as far as the kings of Israel in Deuteronomy 17, he said the king is not supposed to multiply wives to himself. Now, the Lord ain't say if he give the man more than one wife, he said the man ain't supposed to multiply to himself like King Solomon did. Let me show you what I mean real quick, and then we'll come right back to the New Testament. Go to, go to 2 Samuel chapter, I want to say it's 12. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse, verse 8. Verse 7 we'll start at. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith, the, now this is after David committed adultery. David committed adultery. He was already married to Saul's daughter, Michael. I'm, I probably said it wrong, but that's how it's spelled. But he was married to Saul's daughter. But they was kind of like separated. But they were still married. Okay? And David went ahead and committed adultery with Bathsheba. Uriah's wife and set up Uriah so he could be put to death. They and and hey, who's perfect? I'm not going to slander King David because the Most High said that of you know that's the only thing he hold to David's charge. David was a man after the Most High's heart, so David got a good spot in the kingdom, brothers and sisters. But the point is, we all have sinned. So how are you going to point the finger at King David like, oh, I, I would have never done such a thing? Boy, stop. You done did evil in your life and you worthy of the lake of fire too, just like me. It's only because of the blood of Jesus that we're forgiven, that we're justified through faith. It's God's grace. It ain't because you're keeping the commandments so well, my friend. Nevertheless, it says, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. David had like 10 concubines because Bathsheba became his, his first wife. Cause like I said, him and Saul's daughter didn't work out cause she, she was into some other stuff, man. She was, she was very hot with David. Especially when the ark came back. But Bathsheba became like his first wife. That's who Solomon comes through. And then he had 10 other wives. But a concubine is still a wife. It's just a lesser degree of a wife. Meaning when, any, when the inheritance comes at the man's death, the concubines, they get, a, they get a good portion. It's just not as equal as the first wife. Now I'm going to show you in Genesis in the beginning that there was brothers, righteous brothers that had more than one wife. Okay. And the most high didn't kill them. We can't cherry pick and say, well, the Lord allowed them to do it because that's them. And he don't allow us. Come on, man. As long as the brother is not a pastor. And as long as the land that he live in allows for a man to have more than one wife, as long as this brother understand the word of God and he takes care he is responsible to his wives, whether he got two wives or three wives or how many other wives. As long as he does what the word of God says, God will not cast that man into the lake of fire because polygamy in and of itself is not a sin. Just like the Bible is not false just because brothers and sisters take it out of context and confuse the masses. That don't mean that it's wrong. It mean what they have done is wrong. The Lord, he say, let every man be a liar and him the truth. He true, period. Okay, so the Lord told David he would have given him more if that wasn't enough, what he already had. Okay, now 
let me show you matter of fact since we back here let's go to Genesis remember the Lord said if a man if a man uh, have two wives right if he had more he didn't say two he said if a man have more than one wife right he said one beloved one hated he got children with both of them he can't when the inheritance come he can't give it to the one that if he got a son uh, with the the one that he loved more, he can't give the inheritance to him over if he had his if his firstborn is by the woman that he didn't really he not too fond of her, but that's still his wife, right? Okay, let's look at something. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis. Let me see. Um. Genesis 29, and I'm going to try to be quick with this, and we're going back to the testimony. Okay, Genesis 29, verse 17. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Okay, so long story short, Jacob worked seven years. Laban tricked him. He worked seven more years, and then Laban tricked him again. But really, in the spirit, the Most High was trying to prune our forefather Jacob. He was pruning him, getting rid of that flesh, that carnal way of thinking. You understand? By setting this whole thing up. Now, I'm not saying the Lord told Laban a lie and tricked Jacob. I'm saying the Lord is, he's, he's always got a hand in stuff like this because he's trying to teach us to be more like him. You understand? Every step of the way. Okay, so... Let's skip down to um, skip down to verse uh, verse twenty three. Okay, so he he um matter of fact twenty one twenty one. It says, and Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife. Give me my wife. She's not his wife yet, but she's promised to him. Exodus twenty two and sixteen. If a, if a man uh, entice a maid, meaning if he spit game, if the brother spit in game at the girl, at the Hebrew sister, she's a virgin, virgin. She's not a whore. She's a virgin. That's the master key to understanding all this. Okay. She's a virgin. And of course, sisters can become, when they become a new creature in Christ, hey, you become a virgin spiritually. That's another topic. But anyway, it says that, Jacob worked seven, seven more years, 14 years total for Rachel, right? This is what he said to Laban when it's all done. Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. She was promised to him. They made a covenant. They made an agreement, right? For my days are fulfilled that I, that I may go in unto her, meaning have sex with her. When I have sex with her, she's officially going to become my wife. See, before sex, if you make an agreement with the girl's father, that's what the law say, Right? You make an agreement with her father, or what if her father's not around? What in the next of kin? What about her uncle? What about her older brother? You see? Um, granddad. Okay? You make an agreement. Now she's promised to you. I could show you in the law where the Lord say, if a woman that's promised to another man have sex with another man, right? Then th that's adultery. Then she's supposed to be put to death for that. So... Jacob told Laban, look, give me, give me Rachel. I didn't did my, my, my other seven years that I may go in unto her. He just kept it a hundred with him, kept it straight. Right now they threw a, a feast verse 23. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter and brought her to him. And he went in unto her because he didn't know he was probably drinking. It was a feast. So they was partying, having a good time. Right. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that thou has what is this thou hast done unto me? Did I did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? You deceived me, you tricked me, man. And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. Now, 
uh, 29, and Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel. He went in also unto Rachel. So Leah is his wife. Leah is his wife, brothers and sisters. Now, Jacob did not desire more than one wife. He didn't desire that. But the Lord gave this brother more than one wife. And Jacob was not a pastor. Because the nation of Israel come out of him. So you see what I'm saying? There wasn't no congregation yet for him to be pastoring over. So... Jacob, even though he didn't want Leah, when he had sex with her, even though he was tricked, brothers and sisters, you got to get this. Even though he was tricked, he understood morally, I, I still can't divorce her. Because that's not right. That's not right. How you going to sleep with the woman and then you don't marry her? You don't take care of her. You don't provide for her. See, that's really that boiled down to common sense. You're going to get the cookie and then you're going to skip town? Come on, man. That's not fair. What if women was doing that to us? You understand? Would that seem fair? They just want to hook up, then they're going to skip town? And they got your baby? Come on, man. Hopefully I said it right. But nevertheless, so he, even though he got tricked with Leah, he still kept her. He didn't divorce her. He couldn't put her away because that would have been sin. So then he married Rachel too, right? Okay, 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, uh-oh, Deuteronomy 21, in effect, this before the Lord even told the nation of Israel about that law. So how did Jacob understand? And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, surely the Lord have looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. So Leah understood that Jacob preferred Rachel over her, but she kept getting pregnant because she was hoping. And then by the time she got to Judah, she was like, forget it. You know, she was tired of trying to get Jacob's love. But Jacob loved all four of his wives. He just preferred Rachel over all of them because that's the one that he really wanted. The point that I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters, because then he slept with their two handmaids as well. Bilhah and Zilpah, if I, if I said their names right. And he didn't put them away neither. Because common sense, if if I go in unto her, this is that's why, that's why when when we were in sin, brothers and sisters, when we fornicated, that's why if you brothers, you know what I'm talking about. If you got the girl that you really wanted, you slept with her. You wanted to be in a committed relationship, but maybe she was playing games, right? When you broke, when they, when y'all broke up, why do it hurt so bad? Why do it sting? Why do it feel like you mourning somebody? Because it's not normal for us to fornicate like that. That's not how God designed sex. Sex is a lifelong commitment. The moment that us brothers have sex with a female, she automatically becomes our wife. God expects each and every one of us that do that to make a covenant with this woman and take her to be our wife and it is till death do you part unless of course she commit adultery this is why the definition the biblical definition of adultery is a woman a married woman having or she's promised to a man what we call engaged it's a married woman having sex with another man it don't matter if the man that she have sex with is married or not even if the brother is single and he has sex with a married woman, that is adultery. Now, let me give it to you deeper. If, if, the, law of the, if the law of the land that you live in, let's take the United States for, for example, right? This country say one man, one woman equals marriage. They don't allow for polygamy except for in Utah. And like I've been saying in my past videos, these brothers is not trying to do it the righteous way of doing polygamy. They want to, they horny. They lustful and they eyes is never satisfied, meaning they mind is not content with just one woman. Every time they see booty cheeks, they like, oh, I got to tap that. Why? Because that's a demon that's driving that that madness, man. Because then when she when she hit him with I'm pregnant now, the spirit of anger comes over him. F uh, uh, fury. Why? Because he don't want to don't want to take care of no children. He don't want to be no responsible man of God. He want to be a little boy. 
have sex, spill a seed, but don't take care of the responsibility. This is sin. But, the, okay, this country say one man, one, one woman, right? If, if, how, how can I say it? If, in this country, if a brother have a wife and the brother goes outside of his marriage covenant, has sex with another woman, whether she's married or not, doesn't matter. Soon as he has sex with another woman, let's hypothetically, let's say it's a, a single uh, woman, right? He has, he's married, he has sex with a single woman. Guess what? That's adultery too. You know why? Because the law of the land say one man, one woman. So polygamy cannot be instituted in that scenario. You cannot say, oh, well, now he got to take care of her too. It's adultery. It, what I meant to say is you can't say, okay, well, that's not sin. He just... He just added another wife to himself. No, that is sin. Why? Because this country say one man, one woman. Now, if he in Saudi Arabia somewhere, if he over in Pakistan somewhere where they tolerate multiple wives to one man and he have a wife, his first wife, then he go in unto another woman and he's not a pastor. He's not a pastor of Israel and he go in unto another woman. Then it is polygamy. Then he must take care of his second and third wife and fourth. How many other wives he got? Just like he taking care of the first wife. Let's go to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. I'm almost done. Matthew 5 and verse 31. The master himself, Jesus Christ. And Christ is not his last name, we know. But the master said, it hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife. Put away is not the same thing as divorce. Put away means separate. The writing of divorcement is the bill. Read Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 5. It hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Or that bill stating we are officially divorced. Right? 32. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, you separate from your wife, brother, saving for the cause of fornication. So if your wife have not committed adultery on you and you separate from her, you call and, and she have sex with another man, you causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. Why? Because she's not actually divorced. So you brothers that's going around sleeping with different sisters, making no covenant with them, but you having sex with them. I told you, you could you could say that sex is marriage because the moment that you enter into her, God expects you to marry her. You must marry her lest you fall into sin. So if you go around and you sleeping with this sister and that sister, no covenants on the table, you separate yourself from her, meaning you don't stay committed to her. Right. And then she. Because she's operating in ignorance. You understand? It's our job, men of Israel, sons of Israel. It's our job to teach these to teach these women, these daughters of Zion, our sisters. It's our job to instruct them in the in the way of the most high. Think about the umbrella effect in Ephesians. God the Father, the Son, husband, wife, children. It's our job to teach them. So she operating in ignorance. She go have sex with another man. She is now in adultery. And the man that she get with is in adultery. And guess what? They got to repent for that. Why? Because a spiritual door just got open of fornication. So this spirit of lust going to be on both of them. And they both going to be afflicted and don't even know why. All because you did something that the Lord forbade. So the Lord said... If you if you separate from your wife and it's not because she committed adultery on you, it's not because she uh, fornicated on you. She committed some type of sexual sin on you and you separate from her. You going to cause her to commit adultery because a lot of sisters don't want to be single, man. And she going to get hot in the pants one day and she going to want to lay down with a brother. And if she do, she going to be in adultery because she's still legally in God's. In the spirit world, she's still legally bound to you. She's your wife. 
And that's why the Lord say, whoever marries her, marry is sex. It's sex plus the covenant. That's why the Lord said, if the man lay with her, notice he said that first. He said, if the man lay with her, then he got to marry her. And if the father don't want to give his daughter up, then the man supposed to pay a dowry. Get this, the dowry of virgins. Because we're not talking about how the world operate now. Fornicate. The woman been fornicating 20 plus years. Then when she hit 30, now she want a, a real man. And who messed her up like that? Some man did. Let's go to another place and then I'm almost done. Let's go to Luke 16, verse 18. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another, the man, the brother, the son of Israel, if you put away your wife, you got a wife. Look, even if she's your girlfriend and y'all had sex, that's your wife. The next thing you need to do is get some paperwork on it. Okay? But if you got a girlfriend and you sexing her and she's sexing you, you is you to God, you are married already. You just need to get some paperwork depending on the law of the land that you live in. If you separate from your wife and marry another, meaning you have sex with another female, you commit adultery. Why? Because your wife did not sin against you. She didn't commit no sexual sin. So why are you separating from her? Because she don't get up and cook you eggs like how you want? Because her big toe look flicked? Because she got a chipped tooth? Huh? Because her butt is not big enough? So you're going to separate from her? You causing her to commit adultery, man. And then if you have sex with another female, because you think, oh, man, you know, look, that's... That's me, baby. You know, that's how I get down. I'm a G like that, man. Okay, the Lord got your car, G. He say, committeth adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. Simple, very simple to understand, brothers and sisters. So, let me see where else I want to go with this. I'm, I'm trying to end it. I ain't trying to be long-winded. Um... Let's look at, let me see, we could even look at, um, let me see, let's see here. Um, because let me just say this, um, this, this discussion is not about one, I'm not comparing one man, one woman to polygamy. This topic is, I'm explaining polygamy is not a sin. Because God does not make provision, meaning he does not, he does not give you a way to, um, how can I say? How can I say it? God don't tell you how to, um... How, how to manage life without, like, okay, if you, if you commit adultery, God don't say, okay, if a man commit adultery, then him and the adulterous woman, this is how they're supposed to live the rest of their life. God don't do that because he don't, he don't tolerate willful sin. So polygamy cannot be sin because God is telling you how to live life based on if it happened to you. Why would God allow Abraham and Jacob? Isaac was content with one wife. Abraham had two wives. I'm talking at the same time. I'm not talking like, I'm not talking one died and then he got another. I'm talking at the same time, Abraham had two wives. So for, for people to make it seem like God is against polygamy. No, God is against unrighteousness. When it comes to his commandments, unrighteousness, God is against that. And we should be against that. So when, like I keep saying, when these brothers is trying to fulfill their sexual immorality, their lust. And they trying to have sex with this girl and that girl and that. It's going all over in these camps on Sabbath. Oh, well, you better open up your, your eyeballs and, and see what's going on. 
a lot of these brothers and these elders, many of them, is operating in undercover wickedness. But the Lord see what you're doing, man. He see what you're doing. You taking advantage of the daughters of Zion in their ignorance. The Lord gonna get you for that, unless you repent. You trying to hook up with her, but then you already got something. You already got something at home, and you you trying to use the word to cover up your transgressions, man. You need to repent, or you gonna die in your sins. So, let me let me pull up one more. Um, Let's go to Romans. Let me see. Romans. Uh, Romans 7. Paul used. Apostle Paul used this as an allegory. Okay. To explain how we're not under the sacrificial law no more. But we're under the blood of Messiah. But we're going to read this one part. Because it's talking about this topic that we're talking about. Multiple wives. Right. Romans 7 and 1 know ye not brethren for I speak to them that know the law how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth but if the husband be dead she is loosed from the law of her husband so then if while her husband liveth she be married to another man she shall be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. So he repeats this in 1 Corinthians. Now, the point is, if, let me speak in layman's terms. If a Hebrew brother was out here fornicating, he living in sin. He's not in the word yet. He's in sin. He's fornicating like most of us have. And he gets this girl pregnant. He don't know nothing about what the word of God is talking about as far as sex and, and the covenants. And he don't know nothing of that. None of, nothing about that, right? He get this girl pregnant. Okay, now he's got a child with her. He keeps on fornicating, gets another girl pregnant. Now he's got two children by two different women, right? Then he gets into the word. The Lord humbles him. He falls on his face before the Most High. He repents. He gets, he gets into the word, right? Now he's beginning to understand. He's not walking in deception no more. Now he's walking in the truth, right? He's understanding the word of God through the Holy Spirit. Now he realizes, this is my first wife and this is my second wife. But seeing as how they're not in the word, they're not going to abide by the word. So what I must do is walk in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I must deal with them according to knowledge. Right. Even though they don't know. And it's not like I can go to them and say, look, we got to get married. We got to get married. You're going to be my son. It ain't going to work. So what do you do? You walk in wisdom. You understand how to use the knowledge that the Lord is, is giving you. Right. So what you do is you take care of your children. You take care of them. Th look, the government in the United States, the government understands this principle of polygamy. I'll tell you how I know, because. When they say to, to a, a Hebrew brother who have children, he can have children with one woman and they, they separate it, they're not together and he get another wife, right? The government will say, look, you owe child support because you're going to take care of that child. Why? Because they understand what the Lord is talking about. The Lord don't let you get the matrix and then walk scot-free and go get some more matrix. He don't let you do that. You, going, you are accountable, brothers, so, what happens if the brother have a wife and then he gets another wife, he's not a pastor, and him and his two wives get into the word? He's not a pastor. And he have children with both of them. Then what? What we just read this morning comes into effect. If a man have more than one wife, let me read it so I don't mess it up Deuteronomy 21 this is where it comes into play brothers and sisters 
Deuteronomy 21 and 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So... Him and his two wives get into the word. Now they must abide by what the Lord set in motion. The Lord don't make provisions for sin, period, point blank. So if King David transgressed, the Most High owes him. I, I'm speaking as a man when I say this. But if King David transgressed by having more than one wife, I'm curious what the Most High going to say then. If these brothers that say that King David sinned are right. If Jacob, our father, sinned, I would I, I want to hear what the Most High going to say about that. Because I want to make sure I'm in right standing with the Heavenly Father. I don't want to be transgressing against him. I'm a pastor to Israel, so I don't have more than one wife. I don't care about having more than one wife. I don't have no interest in that. So I, that's why I said in the beginning of this, I'm not biased towards what these brothers is, is, is after. I'm not trying to have more than one wife. You understand? Because I understand... A lot of this stuff is based on lust, sexual sin. These brothers have not dealt with themselves. They are horny perverts. And they don't want to admit it. But just because they're representing polygamy the wrong way does not mean polygamy in itself is wrong. So we know Solomon did what the Lord did not intend by way of polygamy. Solomon had... A thousand wives but guess guess what Deuteronomy 17 that's why the Lord said the king shall not multiply wives to himself why because they are gonna turn your heart away you multiply them to yourself the Lord did not add that to him what happened to Gideon didn't Gideon have so many the, the book said Gideon had a lot of wives and a lot of children you understand so we have to, we have to, with all our getting brothers and sisters, my point is this, with all our getting, we must get understanding. Multiple wives is not transgression. It just depends on the circumstance. For a preacher of Israel, for an Israelite brother that is a pastor over God's people, God's sheep, a pastor can only have one wife, the same way as the deacons that are under him. Period, point blank. There's no questions about that. No, there should be no questions about that. That is cut and dry. If a brother is not a pastor, then you have to look at his environment. Where does he live in the world? What are the laws of the land, the country that he is a slave to? Because I'm, I'm talking about Israel, my people. So if the country he live in forbid multiple wives, then he cannot take multiple wives and then say, well, the Lord said. You can't do that because the Lord told you obey the law of the land. So, again, with all our getting, we need to get understanding and stop with all this madness and confusion. People running around like they can't comprehend what the Lord is talking about. It is the Lord made it very simple, man, to understand. Very simple. So with that, I hope that clears up some stuff for some people that may have had doubts or maybe was you know questioning polygamy and even in the last day well not the last days but even when the messiah come back and set up the kingdom for for us for israel the book say in isaiah 4 1 i know some brothers and sisters that think that that's talking about a prior time i'm not going to debate them on that i just don't agree with that i believe that how it's written is talking about the latter days it's talking about in the end the lord says seven women going to take hold of one man when you compare scripture with scripture, the Lord talk about when he come, he going to kill so many men on the earth. It's going to be some it's going to be some women, not just daughters of Zion. It's going to be women left. The ratio will be seven to one because a lot of men is going to die. And so seven women to these flesh people going to be left. They're going to repopulate the world during the thousand year reign of Jesus and the saints. So the Lord is going to reinstitute polygamy on a worldwide scale. Because the government will be upon his shoulders, the book said. So, nevertheless, I hope this all makes sense. If anybody has questions, you feel free to message me. 
Grace, peace, and mercy to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered worldwide and the strangers that are with us. Shalom, Israel.